Good morning. It's Wednesday, July 16th, 2014, and this is Tech Talk Today, episode 27. My name is Chris, and I'm pretty excited because joining me in studio today is my beautiful tan crayon, Angela. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Nice to have you in studio today. Here I am again. We're also joined by an esteemed group of mumble people all the way over there on that screen. Look how many nice people have joined us this morning. Wow. That's great. Uh, so let's start hello. with the... Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, let's Hi, start hi. with the uh, story that was almost picked just because you're going to... It's like it's like the news cycle knew you were going to be here today, Angela. Apple and IBM announced a major team up for enterprise mobility. Uh, IBM and Apple will begin selling, and this is IBM, will be selling iOS devices to its corporate customers and will also create more than a thousand industry-specific native apps that are built from the ground up for iPhone and the iPad. IBM will provide cloud services optimized for iOS as well with capabilities like device management, security, analytics, and mobile integration. Uh, I'll give you the details and then I want to share some thoughts on this. According to Apple CEO uh, Tim Cook, Apple began speaking with IBM a couple of years ago Hmm, about when Steve Jobs died, about possible partnerships and in the enterprise arena specifically. Apple and IBM, he says, are the best, and we want to put those two together. There's no overlap and no competition. They're totally complementary, and more than anything, it focuses on the enterprise customer. IBM's first apps, tailored specifically to various industries like retail, healthcare, banking, travel, transportation, and more, will be coming this fall, with additional apps following in 2015. The company also has plans to roll out its mobile-first plat platform for iOS, with benefits like analytics and cloud storage. This is a huge partnership. First of all, uh, the reason why this is a really big deal is because it's pretty strange to have uh, these two companies working together. Apple doesn't really partner with anybody, and when they do, it usually ends really badly. Uh, and if you look at the history of Apple, they used to be big rivals with IBM. In fact, there's this, I don't know if you've seen this picture, this classic picture of Steve Jobs standing in front of the IBM sign, flipping them off, right? This is back in the uh, uh, early 80s, <laughs> before they launched Macintosh. And uh, to sort of represent like what a change it is from the Steve Jobs era to the Tim Cook era at Apple, uh, at Darth on Twitter uh, made a new Apple one where he took Tim Cook That's awesome. <laughs> and made the peace sign with IBM. And uh, I don't know, to you, does this, does this register at all? Does this seem different? Does this seem weird to you? Does this seem out of character? Uh, for Apple? Yeah. Uh, n um, I don't know. I, I don't actually know Apple as a company, but I, what I did think about was... Um, like our, at the IT consulting and how that might be a new like area of of getting services to right businesses. I mean, uh, IBM. See, Apple has always really struggled to get into the enterprise area, and that's an area like you're saying. IBM is really strong in is the you know business mm -hmm. enterprise in IT market, um, and it, it definitely feels a little not like Apple of old, but maybe that's. That's normal. I mean, Apple has to compete now with Google. And you have to wonder, what's Android? How's, what's Android's response to this? Because this is a pretty big in. IBM is a very powerful brand in the enterprise space. So you come in, and you package all of IBM services up with iOS devices, and then IBM sells those iOS devices for themselves. It might not have been a Steve Jobs move, but it seems like it's probably going to sell quite a bit of iOS devices. Mm -hmm. So, But it's, is it any different than like Sprint selling iPhones? Well, this is different in the sense that, uh, like, like a play to sprint would be to get consumers to buy phones, but the big problem is, is like, uh, you have yeah, on the, the so the demographic is the only difference. They well, they want to get enterprises using mobiles for all kinds of stuff, like meeting right. presentations. Like they want to sell more devices into okay. those companies. Okay. And so that's IBM has those relationships. They're in there, mm -hmm. uh, but it seems like the end of. I think. It, I think. I don't know. This is definitely seems like something Steve Jobs would never do. This is probably the biggest sign of an end of an era for Apple. They're transitioning to a big company, a different kind of company. Hmm. I'm uh, sure Jobs is rolling in his grave. Oh, you think so? Yeah. I, he hated Apple. I'm sorry, he hated IBM clear up till his dying day. That's true. I mean, well, uh, I mean, you know, things aren't the same anymore, right? IBM isn't even a player in the de in the desktop space. Back in the 80s when Steve Jobs was flipping them off, they were the number one competitor to the Macintosh. <laughs> Nowadays, they're not. They don't even own that. They're not even in that business anymore. So I think yeah, times it, have changed. It, it, strange bedfellows, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I say if it lasts more than three years, it does better than I expected. That's my little prediction right there. All right, we got to talk about this next story because it made me slap my forehead. <laughs> Google announces they are rescinding their real name policy for Google Plus. You can use any kind of nickname you want now. Yeah, I actually I saw that um, yesterday on G Plus. You know what? You know what? Rikai reminded me of this is they they 
decimated the YouTube comment system with the Google Plus integration, forcing real name on all YouTube commenters. Yep. They, yep. Uh, I, I was just, bef- I swear to God, before uh, the, the morning before this announcement, I was looking at our analytics, and on average, our comments on YouTube videos are down like 700 comments a month since the real Easily. name change. Yeah. Easily, yes. And it's because it's because people don't like the Google Plus comment system. Yeah. Google decimated that aspect of the YouTube community because of this policy. And and it also like made people feel uncomfortable about Google and it, and it was you know also came at the same time they were cramming Google Plus down everyone's throat and then here we are. Ah, uh, you know what? Uh, we're going to take that back. Now if you already got a profile, I don't know if you can change it. You might be stuck. I don't think so. And they made all those people change their YouTube accounts, and it I just yeah. I just, so oh. so now this new Nick name, it will that's what will show up mm-hmm. instead of your name. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. But how, this is this was announced like they allowed pseudonyms like six months ago. So uh, What's the difference. I think the difference here is that you still had to put your real name in there, but you had then a display name option. I think that's what uh, that okay. was is a display name option. Uh, so this I to me seems like. Uh, because Vic's out now. Vic Gundutra, who was the big, the big uh, Google Plus force in Google, he was the guy that was really the visionary, driving integration everywhere. Well, he left. Uh, the former Google Plus chief uh, staunchly defended the social network, but he left the company earlier this year. At the time of Google Plus is launched, he likened the restriction to a restaurant that doesn't allow people who aren't wearing shirts to enter. That's what the real name policy is. And Eric Schmidt. Uh, who was, uh, at the time of the Google Plus launch, chief executive, Eric Schmidt said that, on, and he said this on air, on CNBC, you can actually go find this on YouTube, he said, I don't know what the problem is with the real name policy. If you have something that you don't want anyone to know about, maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Yeah. That's true. I don't, no it's not. Yeah it is. No it's not. Sure it is. No, talking about, there there are things that society does not consider okay, or the government does not consider okay, that people should be allowed to talk about, because that's how you begin to change the public opinion on a topic. Uh, you know, Wait, take but, home but, birth, or what? Do you, I mean, do you really think that a person just hiding under a nickname is really going to stop the government from finding no. your IP address? I'm not saying that, but I'm saying it is. A, and... I am saying it is a crucial element to free speech. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's well, going to change the world. An- anonymity is. An- yeah. I don't, I don't know how to anonymity. Say that but at, at the end of the day, <laughs> it's like don't use Google Plus. Like if that yeah. was a problem for you, don't use it. And yeah, if you can't exactly. comment or, on YouTube, sorry. Or you could just change, make a new account named Carlos Danger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, and you assume I haven't already? Uh, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> hey, uh, some good news for uh, Linux gamers, because a lot of Linux games that are coming to the platform these days are written with Unity. You guys have heard us talk about Unity on the Linux Action Show before. And one of the major problems with Unity has been kind of mm, uh, controller support. Well, Unity 5 will be supporting SDL-style mappings. Now, if you know what that means, you know why that's a big deal. It's about as, it's about as native as you're going to get on the Linux platform. Uh, This should make it easier for developers to make use of existing work that's out there in the community. Uh, So they'll be supporting SDL game controller config, which amongst other things is used by Steam Big Picture Mode to communicate its gamepad bindings to games. So this is great because there's a lot of games for Linux these days being written in Unity. And uh, Linux gamers just got a little bit of an upgrade. They don't have to do anything. Just have to get the next game. Hey, Ann, do you know what I'm really starting to get excited about these days? Uh, something that I heard about yes in yesterday's tech talk today. Oh, well, not that just yet. I'm just excited about 3D printing in general oh. these days. Oh, okay. Don't get ahead of yourself, young oh. lady. Don't spoil it. Uh, so that is the best story of the week, though. <laughs> so don't, I saved it just for you. Uh, anyways, 3D printed cadavers are revolutionizing anatomic, anatomical anatomical education. Uh, the kit consists of all major body parts required to learn the anatomy of the limbs, chest, abdomen, head, and neck. That is so cool. All without any actual human body parts. Right. The 3D printed anatomy series is created from real humans, though. Uh, they The team goes out there, yep. they scan like either through uh-huh. x-rays or CT scans, they take a look at your body, Yep. and then they print it out. Yeah. How cool is this? Yeah. Is this the like, coolest thing ever? That is pretty cool. I thought so. Uh, so uh, if you uh, if you're in school, pretty soon you could be learning on a 3D cadaver. There is. That, some... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, uh, I was just gonna say that would have been so handy when I was in anatomy school. I mean, it, it's just so much easier than looking at a, a piece of paper in a really thick book trying to describe all the moving parts of your body. And no kidding. Well, and you know, uh, you could theoretically. So this is what I love about 3D printing: is you could get a 3D printer at home and print this stuff out. 
Like maybe not the body part one, but you know what I'm saying? Like it's an option. Yeah. I tell you what you might want to print out at home, Ange. Uh, this is uh, something from a Japanese artist. Uh, she actually got arrested for this uh, because she's been printing 3D versions of her vagina. I will. And uh, she makes what? it available for download. You can download her vagina. That's awesome. And uh, print it yourself. Wow. And uh, she's decided to make an entire art career out of molds of her vagina. And uh, she scales it up. She's included, uh, like here's some, here, here, this might be NSFW uh, for those of you watching. These are cell phone cases with uh, her vagina that are 3D printed. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, this is a, uh, a kayak. That, <laughs> <laughs> How great is that? Oh my gosh. She's got a vagina kayak. <laughs> she that is hilarious. Uh, and I'll just play a little <laughs> bit of this video for you because it's not in English. Um, but you can see how adorable she is. So uh, this is actually, there's actually some legitimate, uh, uh, there's actually some legitimate efforts behind this. Uh, the Japanese artist has been arrested for disseminating 3D printable design files of her own genitalia, 3dprint.com reports. Uh, her name is Megmi. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. She's 42 years old. She was cuffed by Tokyo Metropolitan Police for allegedly supplying virtual lady parts via email to a 30-year-old man. And uh, many others. And many others <laughs> <laughs> back in March. I don't understand why that isn't offensive, an offense. Uh, because it's taboo. They talk about in this video that we have playing in the background right now about how taboo it is to talk about your lady parts over there. But, but get arrested for it? That's pretty taboo, huh? Uh, her ultimate aim is to make the vagina more casual in a country where it's considered bad form to even mention the lady's inner sanctums. Oh. Hmm. So there she is. Okay, so she pours the mold out. See what she's doing, okay? Okay, so she takes the mold. And she... Wow. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and mold is done. No, that was not. Oh, yeah, now she pours that in. Yeah. And they've done 3D scannings. So there you go. Wow. And then she paints it. She paints some different colors, all kinds of stuff. She does design patterns on them, she decorates them. She mails them to guys who want her, her vagina for some reason. That's reasons. awesome. <laughs> you like that Yeah, I was just going to say, I think I might need to do a faux show on um, things with dead people because um, there is a city somewhere in the world where once once a year they they dig up their dead loved ones. What, and And carry them around the village. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't they dress them too? No, they do not. That is not a thing. Yes, it is. No, it is, it is, it is. It is, and it would be so much better if they just 3D printed those people, stuck them in a closet for a year, and just wow. carried around. That's where you were going. Okay. Yes, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> There's a connection to the story. Um, but then um, also, there was one other uh, uh, thing about the 3D printed. Um, yeah. What was it? The the, uh, the parts. Oh, there's a there's a there's a movement now to pose people that have passed away for their memorial service for the memorial service why are we getting more weird about this stuff? i know shouldn't we be getting less weird about this stuff i know i know yeah th i saw it in a story um some lady she loved playing poker so they, they posed for, her playing poker instead of being in a oh coffin my gosh. she was holding a cigarette oh, holding no. A, oh no, no a glass no, no, of no. alcohol and sitting up yeah. a glass of alcohol and uh -huh. decomposing tell me she had a cigarette too that just make a perfect that's what I just, that's, oh you did that's what I said first. oh i got hung yeah. up on okay sorry yeah. i just uh, ooh. Yep. <laughs> So uh, anyway, yeah, I should probably do a faux show on dead stuff. Well, uh, what do you think about like with this 3D printer phenomenon? Like, imagine we have a 3D printer at home, like in six months. Yeah, I'm just saying. Yeah, imagine that. you know, and then I, like Dylan prints out a lady part. I think you have, uh, well, he wouldn't. But no, I when think he's you older. have kind of a pipe dream about the whole 3D printer thing. It's I think you don't pretty... know. I don't think you know. Good. I'm just saying, it's awesome. Good. It's just really cool. That's all. It is cool, but yeah. it's just not as advanced as you know. Like you talk about, oh, our kids are going to be printing their own toys. That's going to happen. It, uh, That's more advanced, kind of. You watch, it's going to happen. Well, it's gonna I do happen. know, I do know that 3D printers can print moving parts. Yeah. Literally, you can take it off the printer, and it will have moving parts. That's wild. It's really crazy. Um, so, Mumble Room, before we wrap up for the day today, uh, any thoughts on the whole uh, uh, Apple IBM story or um, the uh, 3D printed stories or anything or that like that? Unity one that was just uh, kind of tucked in there nicely. Yeah, you like that? I just tucked that one in there. I like to sneak in a little Linux stories. Uh, any thoughts before we wrap up, guys? 
No? Okay. Very just, good. Uh, yeah, hmm. go ahead. I, I, I'm just speechless about the whole 3D printed thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's kind of that's kind of a bombshell. I wonder how many people here <laughs> what would buy. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I, I, see this going. Yeah. I, I see where this there is There is a market for that. See? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I'm, I know there I'm is. I'm actually kind of confused why Japan is, you know, d- um, disturbed by this because you know everybody's opinion of Japan would think the opposite. Maybe it promotes uh, girl children. <laughs> I think it's a new revenue so- revenue source for online media. Like people could like you could you could sell part your body parts 3D printed things like that. I'm just saying. There's a way to make Actually, money in this. Actually one question I have. Yeah. What what licensing is that mold under? <laughs> I think it's free. It, it's, it, it better be the GPL. Yeah, I hope so. Or uh, it might be BSD licensed. I wonder if she like looked in the mirror one day and thought, "Man, that looks nice." No, I need to share this. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> it's actually this is printable. <laughs> no, it's not like that. It was. Uh, it says in the video. I watched the whole thing. Well, most of it, not the oh, whole. Oh, right, wait. She's not three. No, she is three D printing it. Right? It's she not does. just molds. It's not just molds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, she said that she wanted to know if her vagina looked like other people's vaginas. She didn't know what other people's vaginas looked like because they don't talk right? about it. Right, I know, right. Well, I I don't know, but I so she. Well, <laughs> same with you. With not really, I don't care. Man parts. Don't give a crap. <laughs> no, <laughs> mine is amazing. That's all that matters. <laughs> uh, but she wanted to do that so that way other people. This is really not technology related at all. So we'll wrap it up. Anyways, GPL no, no. your vag. <laughs> Go Chris, over. I think that's- yeah. I think that's one thing that's not wasted effort. Ah, yikes. Uh, <laughs> all right, go over to Tech Talk Today, techtalktoday.reddit.com. Let us know what you want us to talk about. Uh, submit your stories, vote them up or down, leave a comment. Uh, I take all that into consideration. And uh, we might be pre-recording, pre-recording, pre-recording on Friday for uh, the OS Con days, the, or OSCON days that I'll be gone. Yep. So if you are going to be around on a Friday morning, uh, we'll do it at 9 a.m. Pacific like we normally do. And then just keep going. Yeah, so we have one more show tomorrow, and we'll do an extra bonus show on Friday if you want to join us for that. I'm giving you a heads up right here, right now. We'll try to get the calendar updated, too. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Yep, and Faux Show returns, and I have a special guest host this Sunday. Oh, that's lined up? Yep. That's locked in? Yep. Do you want to announce who it is? Uh, No. No? Okay. And are you feeling better? Yeah. Good. Yeah, we had to miss a faux show. So that's back on Sunday. And uh, so uh, go to jupiterbroadcasting.com slash contact and send your feedback too because on one of those pre-records, maybe both those pre-records, I'm going to try to work some feedback in there too. I probably should have put some in this episode, but I had I had a crazy hardware failure again this morning. It's it's one of those things. We had a knuck die on us, but it's all right. We press on. Okay, that'll wrap up this episode of Tech Talk today. Ange, um, I wanted to leave you with... Um, a little, uh, a little perspective of old advertising, and yeah. you know, one problem. This is uh, this ad. You'll watch it, and you'll think, "Oh, that's quaint," and uh, look how sexist it is. That's great. Uh, what it actually is, though, is it was the beginning. It was the dawn of a brand new advertising era where they could make you feel really self-conscious, and they preyed and on your. Um, what is it when you're like worried about your appearance? What's that called? What's that? You know, when you're like self-esteem. A, self-esteem. Yeah, self-esteem and uh, what the whatever Rotten said that was it too. You know, you're yeah. So they they that's when they're like, well, hey, we can play to that and really sell some stuff. So that's what makes this ad uh, really great for me. But maybe it's just because we have bad breath. That could be what it is. <laughs> Getting a new hat for the luncheon, Helen. What luncheon? Why, Thelma, don't tell me you've forgotten. Forgotten? Mm-hmm. I wasn't even invited. Why, I haven't been invited anywhere for weeks. What's wrong with me anyway? What's wrong, Helen? Maybe it's your breath. But new green mint mouthwash stops oral bad breath three ways better than antiseptics. One destroys mouth odor itself, even from onions, smoking, telltale beverages, not just germs. Because green mint contains exclusive chloroquat plus a new mouth sweetener. Two, even mixed with water, green mint has 37% more penetrating power. Three, tastes so good, leaves no antiseptic smell. Yes, with green mint, there's always a happy ending. Your mouth tastes so minty fresh, you know your breath is safe. Used professionally by over 10,000 dentists, green mint stops oral bad breath three ways better.